Welcome to the first ever Ending Explain video on YouTube. I thought people might be walking out of us, they want to know what exactly does it all mean, so boom, Ending Explain, first one ever, there, there's nothing else like it. What is up, Flick fans, and welcome back to my channel. Like I said, you have probably seen so many Ending Explained videos on YouTube, so I'm not claiming this to be the ultimate spoiler-filled answer to all of your questions. No, this is just my response to the movie Us, and it was hard to really talk about it and flesh out my thoughts in my non-spoiler review. Today, I'm going to dive deep in what does it all mean? What do I believe it means anyway? And I want you guys to get down in the comments section below. Let me know, did you like the movie or did you not like the movie? First off, if you want to hear my overall thoughts and see what score I gave it. Then I encourage you to check out my actual review, but today I'm going to dive deep into this film. So Us, this is a movie directed by Jordan Peele who did Get Out, which is a very different kind of horror that offered more of a straightforward political message, if you will. Us is way more of a horror movie. It has those horror tropes and slight cliches, like I said in my other review. But when talking about actual ideas that this movie brings to the table and really diving deep into what does it all mean and what were the subtle hints dropped throughout the movie that some of these a lot of people are going to miss the first time. I guarantee there are things that I'm not going to talk about in this video just because I didn't notice that there is so much happening with this story and where it leads. Yes, there are predictable elements, but there are also elements that maybe you don't even know of yet. And that's why I wanted to do this video just in case you haven't watched one of the other 76 videos out there. Everybody's always talking about the good things. I actually want to start with my negatives of us. Give you guys some reasons behind why I did not give this film a perfect score because when I give a movie anything less than a 10 out of 10 is because I do see clear issues and not that there are super clear issues in this movie, just minor nitpicks here and there. And I'm skipping to the end when all of the tethered come out of their shells basically and start killing the people that they are based off of in a very zombie-like fashion. But here's my problem with this aspect of the movie. How are these people getting their food? Because because we know they ate the raw rabbits and it looked like there were plenty of rabbits to go around but they just keep multiplying and this is my motion for multiplying rabbits but it was just interesting to see how did they go about life down there because of course we didn't explore the entire area I'm sure there's tunnels and tunnels for day because they talk about it in the film but then where did you get the matching red suits and the gloves were they handmade were they just went and bought at a store did she go to JC Penney's and buy all of them before she went back down to the tunnels those are questions it's just things that Jordan Peele expects us to accept as an audience and I'm fine with that because I enjoyed so many aspects of this movie but you look at a nitpick that's a nitpick and then you look at the connection of Adelaide and evil Adelaide how does that connection work because we know that the tethered beings kind of mimic in this really messed up way you see when they're on the actual roller coaster the tethered versions of them are doing this weird like shaky thing with their body where they can't actually do it because these are imperfect versions of human beings that's why they can't talk they can barely get a word out all they can do is screech they can't even walk right and we see that throughout the film my question here is how does that work with Adelaide's character because the actual human version of Adelaide is in the tunnels the entire time we find that twist out at the end of the movie even though for a lot of people it's going to be a very predictable and obvious element which is fine I think Jordan Peele knew that everyone was going to guesstimate and anticipate that thing happening but since she is in the tunnel she is the one getting stuck with all of these imperfect things whether it's the family element or her parents or just getting to live in the outside world she is now the version in the tunnels and the imperfect version is now human and she has to learn what it means to be human and you see that spark all throughout the film now getting into the things that I really liked since I had a prediction at the beginning of the movie my wife and I both did that they were going to switch places at the end I was looking for subtle hints throughout and I think that's what a lot of people are going to do on their second viewing and maybe some on their first viewing like I did but I was watching for those really subtle smiles and that lunacy that you can just tell dripping from Lupita Nyong'o's performance who was incredible in this movie and every now and then there will be a smile or a smirk or something very minor that she does within the movements of her character you see her eating a strawberry at one point implying that she is a vegetarian because she's so afraid to eat meat that's all they did in the tunnels. Then she talks about the fact that she does not drink alcohol. She tells Elizabeth Moss's character that she doesn't like talking about herself because it only reminds her of her actual self 
in the tunnels at this moment in time. You see her freak out. I mean, have this panic attack when her son runs off. Even that at the time, I didn't think much of it, but thinking back to that moment, she was afraid that the same thing that she did to the normal version of herself was going to happen to her son. So of course she would freak out when her son runs away. See, these seeds are planted all throughout the movie that this reveal and this twist is coming and maybe you predict it and don't even notice any of those seeds. But those are some very fun elements that Jordan Peele planted all throughout this film. The craftsmanship, the way that he went about the script and directing this movie, bringing it all together by the end, I think was a very brilliant move. One thing that a lot of people may not like, I find it so interesting that the family just accepts the fact that they are murdering not necessarily people. They don't know what they are at that point. They could be zombie, zombie clones. And looking at this movie in retrospect, it does feel like a giant zombie apocalypse film because at the end of the day, the final scene, even though they are holding hands in unison, the world is being overrun by these clones of human beings. We don't know how far it goes. We don't know if it spreads all throughout the world. My opinion, it is a US only thing because this is a government conspiracy. That fact is hinted about Multiple times in the movie, there are two lines of dialogue in particular where I say, Jordan Peele put that there because he wants that seed to be planted in our minds. This is a government conspiracy. They are at fault for why this actually happened. And even though we don't know how exactly they did it, how they went about bringing out the tethered from human beings, we know it has something to do with the higher-ups getting their dirty fingers involved. And a lot of these things are just metaphors for what Jordan Peele believes to be either happening right now, whether it's in this country or worldwide, or just things that he has seen before. I look at Adelaide's character, the actual Adelaide who ended up being switched with her tethered. So her tethered is now up top living the life that she was supposed to live. She is now down here with these creatures, if you will, these soulless creatures who don't know how to talk. They don't know how to do things, but they look to her because even though it's not much of a voice, she has the voice. Anytime you put a microphone in someone's hand and they can stand up above the rest, people are going to look to them, whether it's the rich guy or the person in charge. Heck, you put a microphone in Hitler's hand, a lot of people listen to him. Austin, did you just reference Hitler? But Adelaide has the soul. She has the brain. She can speak. And one of the last things that she remembers is that commercial in 1986 where all of these people are standing across America and holding hands. And that image, that commercial, that idea, the shirt that she is wearing, it is stuck in her brain. And that's the goal. That's the mission. That's the mentality. I have to gather all of these people together because they are looking at me and I have to do this. I have to get us out of this situation they break out, they wreak havoc, they destroy the people who are really controlling them. So now they are both spiritually and mentally set free. And I like how this movie doesn't just hit on all the government conspiracy. It pulls these ideas from urban legends, stories we have heard before. I've been telling so many people this feels like a Twilight Zone episode just stretched out for two hours. And that's exactly what I wanted from Jordan Peele because that's what I think he does best at this point. We have two pieces of art to pull from to see what is Jordan Peele going to deliver from a writing and a directing standpoint, Get Out and Us. What is the reoccurring theme here? Well, there are many reoccurring themes, but the factor that I see is he handles horror well. He knows how to play on these tropes. He knows how to integrate comedy and really good characters. And he knows how to tell a wacky story and integrate things that aren't just political, that aren't just theoretical. He also pulls in the spiritualism into the story, the Bible verse that he uses. First off, 11, 11. Two numbers basically looking at themselves in a mirror. And if you look at it, one, 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 there are four members in the main family. But here's what that verse actually says, and this proves to me that this is his version of the apocalypse. This says, Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. And other biblical translations substitute disaster or calamity for evil. And this passage speaks for the forsaken nature of not only the teachers, but of Adelaide in particular, who realizes at the end she is the doppelganger and not her attacker, Red, who was the real Adelaide. Boom. And this verse is also talking about the rapture, a.k.a. the end of time, a.k.a. Jordan Peele's version of the apocalypse is this how the world ends in his universe? Are these two movies connected? Probably not. And another thing that I'm hearing complaints about is that all of these other families were murdered pretty much immediately and our family is being 
tortured. Well, I, I don't find that very hard to buy. Because the actual Adelaide who was replaced and stuck with the soulless versions of her family wants revenge on the tethered version that has now taken her place. So what does she want to do? She wants to make her and her now family, the family that should have been hers, suffer. And that's why she sends each individual one to play with the mirrored version of themselves. She sends the husband outside to get beaten up. She sends the son away to... Now, there is something about the son. Let me hit on this real quick because I'm hearing this theory as well and I find it very interesting. And this is something that I'm not going to spend a lot of time on because I'm not 100% sold yet, but I find it a very interesting theory. And if Jordan Peele comes out and says, you know what, that was true the entire time, it's going to bring a whole new layer, a whole new element to this movie, and that is the fact that the little boy in the story, in the family, is actually the tethered version of the young boy, and he was switched a few years ago on this Santa Cruz vacation because this is not the first time they have been there. They say that in the story. And a few things do kind of prove this theory if you think about it because the young tethered version of the boy, his entire face is burnt, so that could prove why he can't actually speak like a normal human should. He's playing with actual matches, whereas the normal version of this boy is playing with what he calls a magic trick, and he continues to flip it, but nothing is happening with the fire, maybe because he's mimicking what the young boy is doing down below. The tethered or the real version of Adelaide takes the young boy but does not kill the young boy because that is in fact what this theory is saying her version of the boy, whereas the real version of the boy is the version that dies in the fire. One thing that people are disproving this with is that the version that dies actually mimics what the real slash, I guess not real with this theory, boy is doing as he is walking backwards. But we come back to the point that I made earlier. Is it the fact that the tethered is following what the actual human is doing? Or are the ones stuck where the government was doing all of these experiments, are they mimicking Whoever is up here, whether it's the humans or the tethered, if that is the case, then I may actually believe this theory. It makes a lot of sense that the two young boys are switched and there are so many context clues. Context clues that I really don't have time to get into other than the ones that I just told you. Another one is when the boy is sitting on the beach and building a, you would think, a sandcastle, what a normal boy would be building. The two girls come up to him and say, what are you building? He actually says, a tunnel. Why would he be building a tunnel other than the fact that that is what he was used to growing up in, which is the tunnel underground? And maybe at the end, when he is looking at his mother, who was the tethered version of herself to begin with, maybe he is not looking at her because he is freaked out. Oh my gosh, it's not actually my mom. Well, I guess it wouldn't actually be his mom at that point, and maybe that is why he is staring her down because... He knows that he has been replaced. He knows he is not the normal version of himself. All the while, Zora and Gabe are just sitting in the back seats like, all right, everything's cool. My family's here. They have no clue. So yeah, guys, wow. At the end of the day, Adelaide is not Adelaide. Her son could very well not be her son. The tethered beings are holding their hands all across America. Is this the end of the United States as we know it? Well, stick around to find out. Just kidding. And once again, guys, everything I said just now, it's all coming from up here. Nothing I say is factual, but that's the beauty of movies. And that's the beauty of a movie like this. There are so many theories and speculation and just wondering about what does he actually mean in this scene? What is the ending all about? And that is the beauty of what it means to share an experience in a movie theater and what it means to watch a movie. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Like I said, this video is nothing. If you don't get in the comments down below and let me know your takes on all of these subjects. How do you feel about the characters? Did you like them? Who's your favorite, least favorite? What are the moments all about at the end? Is the boy the actual boy? Have you ever had a rabbit? Not like petting one, but like eating one. Cause, cause it's probably not good. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I haven't forgot about all the Netflix reviews. I'm promising you guys those are coming out within the next few days. And then Dumbo on Thursday. That, that's a thing. I will catch you guys very soon.